Hey guys, John Lee Dumas here, founder and host of EO Fire, and you're listening to Bravepreneur Parents Academy with Balaji O. Welcome to Bravepreneur Parents Academy, where the world's most inspiring entrepreneurs reveal their most defining childhood moments and share their legacy for raising brave little heroes who will grow up to change the world. And now, he still reads comic books under the blanket at bedtime. Please welcome your host, best-selling author, award-winning speaker, and self-confessed geek dad, Balaji O. You know, like the hotel in Vegas? Yeah, no, that's really his name. Balaji He's an award-winning speaker. He's a master motivator. He's a mindset development coach. They call him Dr. Bounce Back. He's faced several life-threatening situations. We're talking to Dudley Thurman today. This story will change your life. Folks, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. You won't believe the conversation we're about to have. Please help me welcome Dr. Bounce Back, Dudley Thurman. Dudley, how you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you, sir? And life is good. I cannot complain. I am honored, sir, to have you on the show. Thank you for making the time today. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Man, I had the privilege of hearing your story a couple of months ago, and I have to be frank, it had me shook up. (laughs) Dudley, you have an amazing, amazing life story. You've been through a lot. (laughs) You know, every now and then, you know, for marketing purposes or whatever, people like to take on a persona, a personality, or or, or a moniker, a name, to kind of let folks know what they're about. (laughs) But when you talk about Dr. Bounce Back, what folks started calling you, that is no joke. Dudley, I wonder if you could take us back to the beginning of of your story. Where did this journey start? Man, this journey started in a small town right outside of Cincinnati, Ohio small town called Hamilton, man. That's where my journey started. Not too, not too big of a town, man. Um, that's where, that's where I was born at. And that's where I was initially exposed to poverty. I like to say that I was born into poverty in the year of 1980 in a small town right outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, man. I mean, at any time of the day, you could see a drunk or alcoholic standing on the corner with that bottle and that brown paper bag, you know, trying to get that last wig off of it, man. Uh, The kids were running up and down the street selling drugs at 11, 12 years old. That's where my story began. Wow. Wow. So what was the family situation for you, Dudley? Siblings, mom, dad, what what did you have to shield you from what was going on outside? Man, um, when I was born, at the present time, I had, a, I had an older brother and I had an older sister and I had a mom. And there was a guy that my mom named me after, which is, uh, his name is Dudley Thurman also. He's a senior. But he he wasn't he wasn't around much he he wasn't around much i didn't i didn't see him much and my mom at that time was kind of you know living a street life she was in the streets and and that's pretty much how things went now my sister was a young teen she was a preteen man and i can remember her cooking for us taking care of us you know like like we were her kids you know but that was just the beginning of my story that's definitely not how it ended hmm. Mm. And so growing up, Dudley, what well, what was your personality? Did you end up on the streets? Did you get into sports? Where did you channel yourself? Growing up, man, um it, it was it was interesting. It was interesting. My my younger years, uh I can remember being exposed to a lot of things that the average kid doesn't doesn't get exposed to being being from Hamilton. You know, uh, but at the same time, my mom got me and my brothers involved with sports right away. Football was our thing. Football was the outlet. I can remember my first time suiting up in pads was five years old, man. So I give I give my mom that much, man. She kept us in sports, you know, and, and that and that became a part of my life at a young age. Mm-hmm. And so 
football kept you focused, that got you through the early years of school. What was it like as you started getting into, getting into those teenage years, the years where now your friends, not just the older kids, now your friends were old enough to potentially start living that street life? Man, my, my preteen years um, is when it is when it all started, really. You know, uh, I was the type of kid I was I was I was very curious. Um, I was outgoing. So I was willing to go places and 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 challenge and gamble in ways that my brothers <laughs> wasn't willing to gamble in. Hmm. So hmm. with that being said. Those were kind of the type of people that I attracted, you know, wow. and and that's when negative peer pressure really started leaning on me, you know, going into the sixth grade, the seventh grade. And that's when I started to kind of create and develop those negative cycles in my life, which I wish I could have taken back. And that's when the negative cycles kind of started to set in in my life. In those preteen, early teen years, and and that's when I started straying into the streets. Uh, when I say straight into the streets, I mean um, I was I was already a hustler at a young age. Uh, nine, ten years old, I was shoveling shoveling uh, snow out of driveways all day, every day when it snowed. You know, I would come home with a hundred, two hundred bucks in, wow. in a fourth or fifth grade. So wow. when I started learning about other things to hustle. <laughs> mm. I kind of, you know, took part in that. And like I said, I was very curious. So I started straying to, to some of the activities that, that, that have to do with the street life. You know what I mean? Mm. And this whole time, you were still a pretty good athlete. What was going on on the football side of things? Man, football was 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 my, my only and true passion, seemed like. I, it was the only thing, one of the only things that... I was truly passionate about. I mean, it was a outlet, an outlet like no other. And not to mention it just being an outlet. I was extremely gifted. I was extremely talented. Um, I'm not stoking myself. I'm not trying to hype myself. I'm not, I'm not doing any of that. I, I had a gift when it came to playing football. You know, a lot of people, um, it took them a lot of work to, to get to, where I was, you know, not just athletically, but, but as a whole in a package, you know, I knew how to prepare for the games. Uh, yeah. I, I had the mindset for the game, uh, for the game of football. I had the skill set for the game of football. I just was lacking the, the, the off, the, the off the field mindset. You know what I mean? Mm. That it takes mm. to be successful, man. But, but it was my outlet, you know, it was my outlet, you know. Did you think you might be good enough to actually you know, play through high school and maybe even play in college? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I know without a doubt that I was good enough to play Division One ball, and that was one of the things that kept me from a lot of my college opportunities because I didn't have the grades. I didn't respect the classroom. Mm. I didn't have I didn't have the mindset. I had the skill set on the field, but not the mindset off the field. So – those don't, me not having those grades is what uh is what kept me from from being able to accept a Division One scholarship. However, um, I still had opportunities. You know, I got letters, I got calls from Division Two schools. There was junior colleges that wanted me. There was, but I was stuck on. I was a D one player, which I was a D one player, but my grades didn't look like a D one D one athlete. You know, so. I did take advantage, slight, uh, slightly advantage of a, a junior college opportunity, you know, at Garden City Junior College. And I went out there and I did a semester in spring ball, but I blew that opportunity the same way I did, you know, with, with high school, you know, mm. take advantage of it. I was still lacking that mindset because if I would have developed the right mindset, I would probably be retiring from the NFL right now. Wow. Wow. And so where did you ultimately take your football aspirations? Um, at some point, you realized you weren't going to be a pro player anymore. How did that happen? Um, that that I continuously tried to uh, to get there, but it just seemed like 
I hit a wall every time I tried to get there. And so at some point I had to recognize, you know, that, that this isn't going to happen. And however, when, when I stopped chasing a football dream, I strayed to the streets even, even harder though. You know what I mean? Because I told you that was, that was my outlet. That was my true passion. So when, when I knew that I wasn't going to do that, that's when I went all, all in, you know, wow. the streets. Wow. Wow. So, Dudley, what happened on the night in question? You've told me about this night. Oh, okay. I still find it hard to fathom that this could happen to someone. Tell us about that fateful night. Well, um, this was actually after I had had went to Garden City Junior College. It's probably about a year after that. And, And I felt like at the time I was really starting to develop the the right mindset to to get to that college field and get some good NFL looks. Mm. However, my my only option at the time was a Division two school because my clock had started rolling. Clearinghouse rules or something. Your clock starts rolling when you enroll in the college and and so with me going to a junior college and then going to a Division one school out of that junior college, I wasn't going to be able to get all my years of eligibility on the field. So my only option was a Division two school. So I uh, start searching for Division two schools, making connections. I let everybody know that 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 knew of me, all the coaches out there that you know right. I was on the grind, and and I'm and I'm about to and I'm and I'm about to hit the field, you know. So if somebody is interested, you know, I'm willing to talk. And I got a few phone calls, and so there was a college, uh, a Division two school that that wanted me to come up. And uh, play ball for him, and and I got the call probably, probably uh, around the first of the around January or so that year, and okay. so I had that whole semester to prepare. You know what I mean? All right. But right. but come to find out later on in that semester, I was a few credits short to be eligible to go oh. play football. You know, wow. so I was going to have to go to summer school. Mm. So the uh, the counseling department directed me to uh, go to summer school at Community College of Aurora out here. So I just went to summer school that summer, you know, uh, all summer. I just went to summer school and I worked out and I went to summer right. school and I worked out. I worked, worked out with a guy by the name of Lindell White and his uncle. He went to USC. He got drafted t- to the Tennessee Titans. I think he, oh, okay. he might have did some time with the Broncos. He was a little younger than me, but he was like a little brother. And so that okay. that was my training group, and so I mm. trained all summer with them with them dudes, man, and went to summer school. And on the last day of summer school, I got my grades because I needed to make a specific grade point average, right. and you know, to get these credits to be eligible. Right. And my GPA right. was right, my grades was all on point, man. It was nice. one of the happiest days of my life, man. You know, nice. I finally accomplished something. I was heading in the right direction. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I went and had some celebration dinner, man. Uh, I went to Applebee's. I can remember specifically. Mm. I went to Applebee's, had me something to eat, and started to get dark. And, you know, I am started thinking, you know, I'm, it's time to go out and party, you know, and celebrate. I was going to you earned it. To, to go in three days to football yeah. camp. So yeah, my birthday was actually coming up in like four, four or five days. So I was going to be leaving, and my birthday was coming up. How old were you going to be, Dudley? I think I was going to be at that time. I was working on twenty-two years old, I believe. Okay, I was okay, working gotcha. on twenty-two. All right, and um, and uh, and you know, I was I was going to go out and, and celebrate and do my thing. Right. So it was either twenty-one or twenty-two. And so I went out and uh, I ended up going out and hanging out with the homies. And we went, I went to a club where it was like a big old party at. And we did all the things that we shouldn't have been doing. And I was leaving in three days. I was good the whole summer. And that last day, I decided <laughs> to just go all the way in, man. Wow. And and that was a night that, that I almost lost my life. You know, Whoa. outside that club, I got stabbed. But I didn't just get stabbed with a with a knife. I got stabbed with a with a sword, and it went what? it went through my back. Yeah, man, it went through my back, 
and it came out the front part of my stomach. I mean, just, oh my god! I mean, maybe less than a less than less than a quarter of an inch from my spine. I mean, like oh centimeters. God. Like, it, I mean, extremely close to my spine. Um, and 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 I was down, man. You know, and 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 I feel like I laid on my deathbed that night, but but you know obviously i i didn't i didn't die you know my life was spared for a reason you know and that's what i tell people don't take it lightly that you woke up this morning you know what i mean don't don't take it lightly that you woke up when i woke up that next day i didn't know it at the time but i woke up for a reason because there was a purpose upon my life so every day you wake up and you open your eyes and you're blessed with another opportunity at that day, there's a reason behind it. There's a purpose upon your life. There's a job for you to do. So, so, so don't take it lightly is what I always tell people that they woke up, you know, and I, and, 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 and by God's grace, I woke up that next day and I'm here to wow. tell that story. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable. So, how did you recover? I mean, what was what was the recuperation like? How long did it take? How are you doing today? My gosh! Oh man, Re recovery was was crazy, man. Um, I, I can I can vividly remember, you know, I can vividly remember the day I left the hospital and I left in a wheelchair and you know uh, they had to help me in the car and. I mean, to take, to to walk ten feet would probably take me two minutes. Mm. When when I when 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 I left the hospital, you know, uh, I couldn't eat food. Uh, I had lost eighty pounds. People, wow. people didn't even recognize me. I mean, I was this big old swole linebacker, middle linebacker. Mm. I had been training all all summer. You know, I was yeah. I was ready for the field. You know, and, and, and to see me 80 pounds lighter, people didn't even know me. They would walk right by me. So my recovery process was was it was it was long. You know, it started off with me just walking, you know, being able to walk good and at an upright position. And I went from walking to uh, jogging and I went from jogging to lifting weights. And I went from lifting weights to lifting more weights and more weights and more weights and more weights. And I ended up, you know, coming out bigger and stronger than I've, than I've ever been in my life. I, I, I turned into a monster after that. Mm. <laughs> Unbelievable. Literally. Unbelievable. You came back from that. Stronger, faster. I mean, uh, bigger than I was everything, but I was still lacking the mindset piece. I, 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 I went back to the streets with a vengeance. Okay, so so let me let me see if I'm with you, Dudley. So you you were on the cusp, on the edge of breaking through finally yes. with your football dreams. It wasn't going to be D one, but it was going to be D two. Yes. You were right there. You had the grades. Yes. And on the eve, the three days before you, it was time to to head out for camp. You got stabbed. Yes, sir. Then you went through this. Very lengthy recovery process against all odds. Yes, sir. I can't believe it. This is amazing. You recovered. And even after that. I went back. You went street. back. You found yourself back in the streets. I found myself back in the streets. Um, I don't know. I want to say sometimes I felt Im immortal, but it's like I didn't. I just. I felt like I had something to prove because no one would have ever expected that something like that would have happened to me. I was, I was that guy, you know what I mean? I, I was, I was that dude, you know? So no one, I, like I was that tough guy, you know? So no one would have ever expected that something like that would happen to me. And I just kind of felt like somebody stabbed me in the back. You know, I wonder how many other people think or feel like they can do that. Too. So I'm going to show everybody that they can. And so I, I, I felt like I had something to prove, man. And, and those next, after I got stabbed, probably those next seven or eight years would probably be the craziest years of my life, you know. Really? 
and and that's and that's when I I really went into the streets. Probably not even seven years, a little less less than that. But that's when things really took a turn, and I went into some directions that I never thought I would go in, and I had more experiences that I never thought I would have. But like I said, I woke up for a reason. If I wouldn't have had those experiences, would me and you even be doing this podcast right now? No. So Dudley Thurman had to go through what he had to go through. He had to recover from a stabbing. He had to hit his hit his face in the streets, hit rock bottom. You know, he had to go through those things or else he, he wouldn't be able to tell this story and, and impact and help the people that that he does, you know. That's speaking from a third party about myself. You know what I know how to develop the mindset to win. What I know how to how to reverse your thought process and focus on real life principles that that are required to be successful, to be a real champion, to be a winner. I wouldn't even know those things if I didn't if I didn't go through it, man. So, you know, I mean, it, it sucks, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my life. I'm thankful. Man, Dudley. Uh, so, <laughs> so y- you went back into the streets six years. You had to hit rock bottom. Obviously, you've turned things around now. You're teaching people mindset development. You're inspiring folks across the country. Yes, sir. Crowd, talking to crowds, kids, adults, grandparents. Yeah. You're reaching all generations. What finally turned it around for you? Honestly, what turned it around for me is when is when I found myself in front of a judge. I found myself in front of a judge and the judge was about to read a verdict back from a trial that I had been in all week. And the judge read that verdict back with my kids there and my kids' mom and my mom and my family members. And, and that verdict came back and she read it. And it came back guilty. And I was to be taken into custody immediately, and I was looking at 17 years. Wow. I had two kids that I loved dearly. Regardless wow. of being in the streets, I've always been a father. And that's when reality hit. And that's when I hit my face. That was rock bottom. That was rock bottom for me. And... um Man, that's when I started conditioning my mind and my thought process, and I really got a chance to to get to know myself. I got I got a chance to get to know me, who I really am, what my purpose is in life. And I was running from my purpose my whole life. Um, I was running from from who I really was my whole life. So, um, the 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 first thing that I did to to get my to get my mind right, to to get myself in order was recognizing who I was. I had to I had to sit down and have real conversations with Dudley Thurmond. I had to ask Dudley Thurmond empowering questions. I had to I had to monitor Dudley Thurmond's every every movement, every thought. I I had to think about Dudley Thurmond's strengths and weaknesses. And engage them all, and and weigh them all out, and 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 through doing all those things, I recognized who I was. I recognized my purpose in in life, and 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 I was able to move forward and move on and do what I'm doing today. So, how did prison that 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 moment uh, of the judge reading the guilty verdict, your kids, your family being there, and you being escorted away immediately? Mm-hmm. Gosh, so how did your being in prison mm. – unfortunately, prison is not often seen as a rehabilitation environment. It, it's supposed to be, but more often than not, it doesn't seem not. like a positive environment for everybody. It's not. Talk to us about that. We haven't seen that before. What was that like, and how did you manage to come out – with this stronger mindset. It's it's not a it's not a positive environment and 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 I don't think that the system is really created and developed to benefit, you know? Mm-hmm. However, everyone has has dominion over over their life. They 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 have control over their own life. 
and 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 if they're and if they are willing to make some changes in their lives and take their lives into their own hands and take real control, then they're going places. So so when when I stepped into when they escorted me off, you know, I was hurt. You know, I cried for days. I cried for days. I cried for weeks. You know, but but like I said, I, I turned to myself. I had to I had to face the man in the mirror, and and man, and, and my life started changing. You know, I I definitely relied on 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 God on the man upstairs. You know, um, the spiritual peace had a lot to do with it. Uh, helped me get to know myself and, and find my purpose in life. But when I hit the prison, um, I walked up in there, man, and 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 I knew that that I was on a mission. Okay. And when I say I'm on a mission, I don't mean I'm on a mission to destroy. I knew I was on a mission to get whatever I could get from that place and get out. So I, I hit the prison. You know, with with my footsteps were already guided. I already had a plan. I already I already had goals. I knew that I was to learn everything that I needed to that I could learn there, um, whether it was in a book, whether it was from another person, whether it was about myself, whether it was about life. I knew that I was there for a reason, and 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 and, and it was a mission, and 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 I'll never forget when these guys came to me. And they said that they asked me if I want to be a part of this choices program. And I didn't I didn't really know too many people there. And I didn't know what the choices program was. But they said that I, I fit the criteria to be a part of this choices program. At this point, I wasn't even asking to 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 do this. My 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 calling and my purpose in life was 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 calling on me. And 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 it was revealed to me behind prison walls. Um, they came and asked me to be a part of this choices program. I didn't know what it was. They said, Hey, will you come out to a meeting? I said, sure. So they sent me a little slip. I came out to a meeting, went in a classroom. It was eight guys sitting in chairs. There was no officers, guards, anyone in the room with them. A door locked behind me. Um, I didn't know anyone, but the guy that invited me and they were all just sitting there. So I didn't know what was going on. If they were about to attack me or what, and one of them yelled out, you know, you got 15 minutes, go. And I'm like, I got 15 minutes for what? And he's like, you got 15 minutes to tell us about yourself, go. And I just started talking. I just started talking. I told them my story. And by the time I got done, they were all giving me a standing ovation, saying that they've never heard anyone just come through the door that first time and do anything like that. So they all wanted to know what my background was. Have I ever done public speaking? Have you spoke before? You you seem like you've spoken before, this and that and that and that. And I told them, no, I've, I've never done it before. And this program choices, it wasn't like no scare straight program. These guys were really formatting speeches uh giving them a you know a beginning a middle and an end they were delivering um they had props on the stage they one on one mentored the kids through lunch it was the only program like this in a prison within a state of Colorado there was not one other program like this and i just happened to go to this prison where there was and they just happened to ask me almost practically beg me to be a part of this program that i didn't even know what it was they just saw me wow. just doing my thing on my daily mission and they wow. was just like you you fit the criteria and so at that point there was another guy that auditioned behind me and and they told me that it takes usually three months to be able to present in a in a presentation in an event. They bring kids in, educators, teachers, and and everyone learns. They they learn from from these guys giving these 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 speeches. Everyone learns and takes notes. The educators, the parents, and the kids. So it's not just directed towards kids. And so it takes a very unique individual to be a part of this program. And so after I was in, after I did my uh, practice presentation, they all came and huddled up, and then they said they wanted me to open up the next the next event in a week. Mm. But it usually <laughs> takes three months <laughs> for them to wow. prepare the guys. And man, they brought that group in, and I opened up. I opened up the whole event with my personal history, and kids were crying. Mm. 
Parents were crying. Teachers were crying. I was crying. At that point, I knew that there was there was, you know, a, a job for me to do, you know, and, and in small words, instead of me doing seven years or 17 years, I went back to court in a matter of months. Mm-hmm. I was only in prison for a matter of months. I went back to court to see the same judge and that judge suspended my DOC sentence. She suspended parole. She suspended everything. She said that there's a job for what? you to do. She said there's a job. My purpose my gift was finally was finally calling me and I was responding to it, you know, and 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 she let me out. She let me out. Are you serious? She let me out. They 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 drove me all the way from that place to to go to court and she let me out and suspended everything. And I've been I'm... and and I've been <laughs> impacting ever since. Oh my God! Not even four or five months later, I was at a college in Missouri delivering a keynote presentation. You know? Wow. Yeah. So, what was it like, Dudley, when you saw your kids for the first time? Oh man, we all cried. They didn't even know that that I was back. They didn't know. They just they just walked in the door coming home from school, and I was sitting on the couch. Oh my God! And they just went crazy and. <laughs> it, it, it was it was an awesome experience. Mm, 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 mm. That's amazing. That's amazing. There's 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 a theme, Dudley, that rings throughout your story, even before you turned it around. You always seem to have a, a resilience, an ability to go through some serious adversity, and, and still pick yourself back up. How how do you think you were able to cultivate that, and and is that something that parents are able to teach their kids? Man, resilience played a key factor in my life because if I if I didn't have the trait I call it a trait of resilience I probably would have gave up on life a long time ago. Um, I've been in a car accident. My left eyelid is plastered on plastered on with uh from plastic surgery i've been in motorcycle accidents where i'm all skinned up um, went through the stabbing i had to overcome and bounce back every time and that and that resilience piece played a major factor now <clears throat> people are always asking me you know when i talk about resilience well you know what does it look like you know what 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 does resilience really mean to you what what is resilience and and i know it's the unadulterated ab- ability to to bounce back and overcome things but i hate to put a definition on it because resilience is me resilience is you resilience is everyone who's ever had to overcome something you know Re- resilience is is that cancer patient that's now labeled a, a survivor you know resilience is that 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 kid that baby that was born at the local hospital and they were born addicted to drugs the crack baby but they made that choice and decision to overcome that addiction as they matured as they as they grew up and it wasn't their choice to be addicted. You know, resilience is, is my son who who caught a major injury playing football when he was 11 years old and was in a full leg cast. And, and he had surgery, what, four months ago, but now he's on the football field killing it. You know, that's <laughs> that's what resilience is, man. Resilience wow. is, is, is everyone. At some point in time in every human being's life, they've had to dig deep to accomplish something or overcome something they've had to dig deep down inside and find that 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 one little thing that made them want to keep going or keep fighting that's what resilience is and and that trait is in every human being but it's up to you to access it wow wow but so so but dudley resilience i mean nobody can argue (laughs) <laughs> that you've got resilience so many things that you've been through and even some of the people in in your sphere of influence your son coming back from that major injury and now he's back on the football field but i got to ask you 
Is resilient? Do some people just have it and others not? Is it something you can teach or learn or grow? How, how does it work? I believe that every human being is born with this, with a trait of resilience. Now, they have to learn how to access it, man. They have to learn how to how to how to access that 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 point of resilience you know, more often because at some point in time in every human being's life, they've had to dig deep. They've had to dig deep to accomplish something or overcome something. Maybe it was in childhood, whenever it was. Now, they have to allow their their mental or their mind state to go back to that time and and access that same trait of resilience. I, I believe that it can be, it can be, coached but um i don't know about taught i believe we all have it but you you got to learn how to access it you know and 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 learning how to overcome obstacles is the is the first step to to learning how to access that trait of resilience you know you have to uh i have a little a little book that i'm writing about overcoming obstacles and you have to learn how to control your emotions. You have to learn how to gauge your experience, good or bad, and and pay attention to your emotions and, and see what your emotions are doing. And, 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 and once you pay attention to how you emotionally react to trials and tribulations, good or bad, that gives you more of a better understanding of of how your resilience trait works, I might be I may be losing you a little bit because I'm literally I'm jumping, with taking a big I'm, leap from talking I'm about resilience you. to to the the overcoming uh, the obstacles piece. I, I'm totally with you right there, and it makes sense because and that's that's one thing that I've been trying to understand because you see certain people it, often we don't know a person's full life story we just see them uh, in their element and they're battling some obstacle and they're overcoming and we these are the people that we admire these are the people that are our heroes either legends of old or people walking around living today like yourself but then we all get back into our <laughs> our ring fighting our own fight and sometimes we don't feel like that resilience is on the inside. We feel like, right. okay, that person's got it, that other person's got it. But right now, this particular obstacle, whether it's health, whether it's finances, whether it's relationships, this obstacle is kicking my butt, right. and I don't know if I can fight back much longer. Right, right. Well, we're all human beings, and, and human beings are very emotional creatures. That's how we survive. That's how we live. Um, I mean, our, our, our emotions are just like our operating system, man. They tell us what to do, what not to do, how to feel. You know what I mean? So it's normal. It's normal to feel like that. It's normal to feel like that. But at the end of the day, you, you, you have to know that, that, it's possible for you to overcome whatever it is that you're going through, you know? Um, and I, and I always talk about man gaining control of your emotions. You cannot let your emotions spiral out of control because if you let your emotions spiral out of control, then you're no good. You know, fear, anger, um, sadness, our, our, our bodies react to those things a certain way, you know? Right. And, and if you allow those emotions to, um, uh, I don't want to say impregnate you, but I will say that because they will grow inside of you and become a part of you. You know what I mean? If you allow them to, I want you to think about what happens when you, when you make a, when you make a sad face, when you make yourself, self make a, make a sad face, you, you start mm -hmm. losing energy. You, you feel drained, you feel <laughs> down, you, you know what I mean? And, and you just putting a smile on your face is going to automatically make you feel better. You know, uh, we are, we're, we're just emotional creatures, man. And we have to pay close attention to our emotions and how we react to those trials and tribulations and we can and we can access that that resilience trait that's deep down inside of each one of us and we can continue to fight you know don't let your emotions control you control your emotions mm. wow don't let your emotions control you control your emotions I, 
I think that's really, really powerful, really powerful stuff. Dudley, thank you for sharing this story. Yes, this, this is unbelievable. This is the kind of story that people are going to remember and share for years, folks. I mean, you've seen what Dudley has been through, and you see what he's doing with his life. Thank you, Dudley, for yes, taking sir. life experience and inspiring others, man. No doubt, no doubt. All right, folks, this is Balaji with the Bravepreneur Parents Academy what a conversation. Thanks again to Dudley. You can get more information about Dudley and his book because his book is coming yes, out sir. soon at DudleyThurmond.com. That's D-U-D-L-E-Y, and Thurmond is T-H-U-R-M-O-N-D. DudleyThurmond.com, Dr. Bounce Back, award-winning speaker, master motivator, mindset development coach, soon-to-be best-selling author. Dudley, thank sir. you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. We'll see you all tomorrow, same time, same place, more motivation, more inspiration on the Bravepreneur Parents Academy. Thanks for supporting my dad's show. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to iTunes. He said hot chocolate is for closers. If you don't subscribe, I don't get hot chocolate. I love hot chocolate. Fear not. Although this chapter of Bravepreneur Parents Academy has come to its conclusion, we have many more adventures for you and your brave little heroes. Head over to BraveQuest.me for access to the BraveQuest Journal, an interactive activity playbook that rewards your little ones with points for accomplishing tasks that build character and unleash your child's inner superhero all before bedtime. We look forward to having you join us for more adventures next time on Bravepreneur Parents Academy.